more session. Um, values is very important to part of our to our programming at camp. And if you were on at the very end of the last session, you heard Jane ask that if you have dice anywhere to go get it. Chelsea has a plan for you in this next hour where you might want to have your dice or die available. So um, Chelsea, are you ready to roll? Ha, huh, roll of the dice. That just happened. You're so that's, funny. That's for Margie to laugh. All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, welcome. Thanks for continuing to hang out. I realize that it is, uh, it's like 6.30 here in Michigan and we ate an early dinner and we're ready to roll now. Um, so as Marilyn introduced, we are looking at how to use the uh, shared core value of individual and skill development into our daily activities. Um, so we're gonna do some breakout groups and then we're gonna come together and do some fun things. Um, so in a few minutes, uh, Janie will set us up into breakout groups. And what I want you guys to do during your breakout groups is think about unique and brainstorm unique moments that you have at your camp. Um, this excludes activity classes because we know you use the core value of skill, develop, skill development during your activity classes. So think of ideas and moments throughout the day that you can, um, that are just unique to your camp. And then we'll talk about how we can use the shared core value with those moments um, in a little while. So you're gonna brainstorm. Um, then you're gonna designate a spokesperson in your group to share the top three ideas, the top three most unique moments that your group has decided, these are the top three. Um, so then that way we're not all sharing 17 different ideas. We're kind of condensing a little bit. So in your breakout groups, you're going to discuss unique moments or activities that you have during your day. You're going to designate a spokesperson and then you're going to agree on the top three of those moments. And then when we all gather back together, your spokesperson will share. We're going to take about five minutes to do this breakout. Okay. Are we good? Okay. Break us out, Janie. Okay.
You're on mute, Chelsea. You I wasn't on mute before. Um, <laughs> how was the breakout rooms? Did you guys have some good discussions, some good, good topics? Awesome. I, I am super excited with the way my group went. Um, I wasn't anticipating that. So I'm excited to hear what the other ones um, have to say. So now we're going to take a few minutes. Margie, if this is where you could please um, document the, yep, do the, do the things with your fingers. Um, <laughs> if you please document and then uh, number them. So number one, number two, number three, as you're going. Um, so if we could please have a uh, spokesperson for a session, share your top three. I don't know who was all in each group. So somebody just speak up. Anybody? West Coast will go first and Mountain Time. All right, we have our top three are, one is Marshmallow Wars. Ooh. One is um, CO2 and Derby cars. And the third is a weekly sleep under the stars with a polar bear swim in the morning. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Can we have the next group or another group spokesperson? Yeah, I can go. Go oh, shot. All right, so for the Eastern time people, uh, we talked about like transition. So whether it's from free time to, you know, um, going to your activities in between activities, whether it's in between flag raising or whatever the case may be, we talked about that. We also talked about like that one-on-one -on -one time you're supposed to be having with your campers just to just initiate some conversations to say, hey, like, you know, what's going on in your life? Where are you at with Christ right now? Whatever the case may be, whether it's a conflict or just being taking that initiative, that extra step to actually care about the camper and say, hey, you know, if this is your first time at camp, even if it's, you know, your seventh time at camp, we really care about you. We really want to know where you're at in life. Let's sit down and have that one-on-one -on -one time. And maybe that one-on-one -on -one time may lead to you just sitting there for an hour, a couple of minutes or whatever the case may be. But that may open up other doors for this camper to say, well, if this person truly cares about me, then every other staff member will feel the same way about me or whatever the case may be. And then we talk about during meal times as well. It's like, hey, like oh. we sit together as a cabin group um, you know, let's have that, that meal time conversation. Let's see how your day's going. What did you do during your activities? Whatever else has come up throughout the day. It doesn't have to be particularly during, you know, the dining hall hours. It could be during your cookout, you know, that outposting time as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Those are great ideas. Okay, I'll give Margie a minute. <laughs> you good? Okay. Yeah. Will you correct me if I'm wrong, Shaq? Thank you. Okay, can we have another um, another group go? Okay. Um, I'm not sure that we totally decided which were the top three, but <laughs> I'm just picking three out of the ones that we talked about. Yeah, for sure. Um, Creation moment in the dining hall, mm. um, oftentimes at lunch, um, where there may be an actual creature of some sort um, that is um, can be viewed um, a lot of times outside the dining hall, depending on what it might be, mm -hmm. um, and discussion about it, learning about it. Um, um, another one would be a kitchen raid where... Um, kids come in their um, PJs at night and um, a certain group is in charge of um, um, providing some kind of a um, ice cream dessert or something. I hope mm -hmm. I'm saying that right. That was Nakamo's idea. Okay. <laughs> um, and then another one that we've done at times in the past um, was a mix up meal where um, everybody gets a sticker um, on their way into the dining hall and depending on your color of sticker, um, you sit at probably a totally different place with a totally different group of people than you usually would. And oh. uh, it, you get to meet new people that you might not otherwise meet, different age groups, um, different um, staff members, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. Thank you. And the next group, I think, is Finchley. Okay. Um, uh, our top three, or more like our three, uh, 
where I we kind of did one on a different, I guess a different tangent than a lot of folks did. But um, the first one I was kind of suggested was the uniqueness of Bible X and how we get to tie it in at least um, our groups. It seemed that everyone from the Michigan camp and from the Texas camp were in our group for the most part. So just based on uh, what we what the comments we were hearing was just um, being able to use the Bible study skills, like to teach Bible study skills through Bible X, because often a lot of kids are thrown a lot of verses and a lot of, you know, stuff maybe at youth group or at church, but maybe they're not sure exactly how to apply that and being able to take Bible X and especially with the older groups, like really teach study skills and uh, how to tie that into like other life things that are going on. Um, another one was just like life, life together as a group. I mean, um, learning to communicate, learning to share, learning to being part of a family group to communicating like effectively. Um, I know a lot of times like the little ones, you, uh, <laughs> from personal experience they usually go to me to try and figure something else out with somebody else and it's just like trying to teach them it's like okay this is how we talk to each other this is how we communicate with each other this is how we learn to live together and uh, especially at camp that can be a big one because sometimes they're just like they're used to the way their family works at home and they're not used to being among other people and being out with other people that they don't know um and the third one which was one um that a lot of us kind of simultaneously talked about was um, the uniqueness of being able to take older campers and be able to kind of give them almost some, some leadership training in that like, you know, for certain, a lot of activity classes, you can ask an older camper who has more experience to then go and work with a younger camper and to be able to you have them. And to them, that's a big deal. Like I told them, my example was archery and being like, hey, could you go step over with this young, kiddo over here and just watch and help them and they think that's a big deal so especially being able to take those moments um to skill build like the leadership for the older kids and for the younger kids depending on where you're at and uh, how they how they use that and how they can effectively use that and mature in that situation so excellent okay so those are all super great ideas. I'm very excited um, to see what is brought up with this next part. So we're going to break out into groups again. If I could have um, those of you who feel tech savvy enough um, to copy and paste the um, one through threes that Margie shared, so then you can have them in your group. Um, and then when you roll the dice, so this is going to be the fun part with the dice. Uh, we'll have a little bit more time in our breakout groups this time. You're going to take turns rolling the dice to get um, a number between one and 12. So ideally, the, the one through threes that um, Margie wrote, like Marshmallow, more, Marshmallow Wars is one. And then two, three, and then it will be like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, so the last one that Finchley said would be uniqueness of taking older campers would be number 12. Does that make sense? So when you roll the dice, you'll want to fall through numbers one through 12. I didn't clarify when I asked it to take numbers for me. Um, so that will give you, that will help you choose your activity. And then you are also going to roll the dice again to get an age group. So you'll roll the dice to get an activity and then you'll roll the dice to get an age group and you'll talk within your breakout groups about what you could do in that moment in that activity with that age group. Thank you. Um, with that age group and how you could make that connection. Because um, really my desire for this session was for us to think outside of the box. We all know that you can do, um, you can grow in skill development. Um, inside of an activity class. But there's so many other opportunities at camp through our daily things that just walking from one place to another as a staff person, if you have it in the back of your head, you can instill this skill, instill this core value into your campers um, or even potentially other staff members during the days. It doesn't have to be during an activity class. So this activity um, for us was just to kind of think outside of the box. So we'll break out into, um, into our groups. You have the lists here from Margie. And then there's also um, the note from me that has the um, age groups. Do we have any questions on how, what we're doing for the next breakout group? 
Okay. Um, let's do let's do ten minutes, Jane. Um, so then that way it gives everybody an opportunity to really think through these scenarios and um, take some notes because we'll do some sharing when we all come back. Okay. Great.
Woo. Awesome. Um, well, I know we got through our group. Susan had a lightning round there at the end, but I think she got her point across with us. Um, so what I would love to hear, I think there's some really great discussions, even just in that 10 minutes. Um, and I think what was beautiful from my experience, not every camp had the same um, ideas. So, I mean, there were 12 different ideas that um, got plugged in with certain different age groups, but we all had, um, we could all contribute an idea to, to how that could um, affect our camp and how we run our daily activities. So what I would love to hear is, did any of you have kind of an aha, like, oh, like that was really cool, that connection between the two of them. Um, and you can either uh, chat or raise your hand just so we're not trying to get 17 people talk at once, but I would really love to hear um, what some of those moments were that you guys had in the other groups. Anybody? You're all on mute. <laughs> Brenda, Brenda posted something. Just posted. I was reading it. We kind of focused on that creation moment that I know some camps have, but um, this came from Landa Lincoln and just talked through specifically for trailblazers, what kind of things could they do um, to, and, and one of them that was, I thought was really creative was to have the kids do the creation moments within mm -hmm. their, their capability, within their age group. Um, <clears throat> use it as a teaching tool to help them not fear creatures, um, mm -hmm. not fear bugs, not fear, you know, which is a good spider and a bad spider. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, bring that whole idea of the fear of the Lord into that is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't apparently get it all in there. But in any case, just the idea of bringing in, you know, some kids are not used to, especially if they've grown up in the city, they're not used to being out in nature. And um, what, what do they fear? Start out with there and perhaps move towards the fear of the Lord and how that becomes the, the, um, the basis for our knowledge and our wisdom about God when we awe and reverence him. I love that connection. I love it. But Thank cool. you so much. Yeah, kind of expanded. It was neat. Yeah. Who else? I'm going to start calling on people. I guess I'll go before she calls on me because I know she's already going to call on me. So I'm just going to go. How <laughs> did you right. know? I totally was. Because <laughs> <sighs> I know you, Stellar. Uh, so we kept, when our roles kept going to staff, so we had to keep rolling to get kids because first staff was doing a derby car and then staff was raiding the kitchen. So <laughs> eventually we got um, trailblazers and pathfinders, third and fourth graders to raid the kitchen. And what we eventually kind of agreed upon in a roundabout way was um, scavenger hunt to end in a great British baking show contest for cooking, for designing and decorating cookies. Awesome. Pretty much I what we ended up with. <laughs> I want to be part of that kitchen raid. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Who is next? Anybody else have kind of an aha moment? I I didn't think about the uniqueness of it until I, at first I was like, oh, I don't know about that one. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, because mm -hmm. I think about it in my own life because I, I'm a music teacher, by the way. And so just like how important it is um, to me communicating with the other staff members and the same goes for camp members. And so like my situation was staff members um, between activities and it was like, uh, okay, we're just walking along. I'm like, well, okay. So then how can we use that time walking along? And at first I was thinking about like, well, let's make sure we did everything right for activity. But then also it's just like, 
taking that time to check in with somebody if you happen to be walking with them or um, going somewhere with them and making sure that they're doing okay. And I mean, often, you know, especially as a counselor, it's like sometimes you have a lot going on that you really can't share because you just have to keep going and you just have to keep pushing forward. And sometimes just those things kind of just get pushed in the back when really you need to, to talk about it. So taking that time maybe to just check in with people. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that can be, that can be huge. Um, we talked about it briefly either in this group or the, the previous breakout, but um, I mean, we're there to serve as staff people. We're there to feed the campers and um, to be giving them what they need. But how often do does another staff member or our director or our co-counselor feed into us as staff people as well? And um, how important that is to remember to, it's not selfish to use your off block to be off for a moment, um, to make sure that you're in line and you're taking care of yourself as well. Um, but then being that person for somebody else who, who you're walking along with um, is excellent. A really good reminder. Anybody else? Anybody? I um, wanted to add to um, what Charlene, I mean, I'm sorry, what Brenda was um, saying about the um, preacher thing. Um, we kind of added um, that it would be neat to then, if it, our a group that chose it was the older older kids. Mm -hmm. So we um, so we came up with um, the, to base the whole uh, after lunch time on that preacher, like maybe even do a song fest about the preacher and then another one doing some history on the creature, um, bringing it in, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, continuing with more than just the science part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing that one of my groups had talked about, and I know um, Song made a comment um, on the chat about conflict resolution and living in a, a group that you're not necessarily used to. And what a life skill that is that we can teach campers. I mean, again, like we can teach them archery and canoeing and how to build a fire and um, outdoor cooking and tree identification. I mean, all the things that make camp camp and so unique and so awesome but the other skills that we're teaching these young kids that they don't always have exposure to or even if they have exposure to we're reinforcing that positive behavior of living in a cabin group of peers and being um you know agreeing on cabin rules uh, this kind of leans more into the intentional community but it's also taking ownership over those moments and even down to our third and fourth graders or even voyagers, some camps run with the voyager program that you can take ownership and then you can work towards following those cabin rules or you can work towards those goals of picking up your dirty clothes or brushing your teeth every day, whatever those cabin rules are. Um, and then how that can affect them so positively for the rest of their life that they know that they learned these skills at camp in a fun environment and that sticks with them um, as they grow up and, and they require these skills to work with a group of people that they might not get along with when they're older or be in a class project with kids that they don't get along with. Um, the things that they've learned at camp in that, in that fun environment still sticks with them. Um, so that was one that really stood out to me. Did anybody else have um, some other moments, some other opportunities throughout the chats that you wanted to share. Well, we had a couple of different people uh, draw Bible exploration or roll Bible exploration. And it was kind of fun because it was bookended. One was a younger age group. And so the discussion was you know how how to navigate and use the bible and some tools that might be helpful for them and then the other age group was the kilts and so it was more how to share um 
share what you learn at home and in your other leadership roles. So, so that was a fun, fun to it get. It was fun to see the two different, the two different ones. Awesome. Um, so that was really um, the extent of it. I really wanted to make sure that people had an opportunity to share um, their experience, what they had talked about in their breakout groups, just to get us really thinking outside the box. Um, because those moments, those teachable moments are all around us. If we just take that moment to pause and trust me, I know camp doesn't always allow us to pause very often. There's always something more to do and another person that needs assistant or um, a camper that is homesick. I mean, there's so many scenarios that we run into um, hourly <laughs> or even, you know, moment by moment within um, the camp life. But this next year is focusing on that skill building and individual development and how um, with our theme of being fearless and that we can take those steps outside of our comfort zone. Um, and that could be talking with somebody who, you know, doesn't seem like they have a lot of friends or um, climbing the bouldering wall or going in a canoe that they, they haven't done that before um, that can go in so many different ways to encourage that skill building and individual development. But looking beyond those activity classes, because um, I, I know that at Camp Cedar Ridge, we structure our activity classes with um, the Bible verses and the kilt requirements and things like that. So just thinking outside of those, of how we can um, feed into these campers' lives that we have for just a moment. You know, they might only come to camp once, but what is that moment that we can take to show them the love of God? to um, show them how Christians behave and um, act towards one another, and then to instill these other soft skills and um, teachable moments in them. So I just wanted to encourage you guys, and um, as we plan for 2021 season with the theme Fearless, just how to look for those moments that um, we can take that that pause and just feed into the people around us, whether they are pathfinders or trailblazers or our kilts or our staff, um, just really take those moments to encourage one another and, um, and have that team building concept with each other. So thanks for hanging out so long with me <laughs> or so late, <laughs> it's late here. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you, Chelsea. Great job managing the um, breakout rooms to boot. <laughs> <laughs> that was Janie. Janie did that magic. That's uh, that's excellent. So um, this is um, we have one last chance for um, networking checking in chatter with each other um, before Brent wraps up our day in about a half hour. So um, Janie, do you have us in groups again or is this? Um, it's gonna be individual camps um, and I'm working on getting um, everybody assigned to those um, breakout rooms right now. Okay, thank you. So there's, um, Usually at conference, we have a chance where we, um, in case you haven't talked to your um, fellow camp people, um, we try and have a session where you can kind of say, what did we learn today? What do we want to um, use in camp, in our boards, in our staff, in our what programming? So this is your chance. You're going to be grouped with your, um, everyone that's, it, that's on from your camp and it's a chance to talk about what what are the takeaways from today um, and then Brent will jump back on pull us all together and um, have a final word before we break up did I miss it or did we not uh, remind everybody what the theme choices for 2022 are oh you're gonna do that when you come back on Oh, okay, because I thought we wanted them to have it. it oh, I'll talk about, you're right. 
Here's it was what all I emailed, emailed out to them last night. Everybody so, got it in an email. So, uh -huh. Janie, do you have it handy just in case people don't have that in front of their face right now? Not right now because I'm assigning break rooms. Oh, that's right. Does someone else have it? I got it. Or Debbie. Um, sorry, my computer's slow. I give Danny a, an extra minute to figure things out. Here it I comes. bet Judy okay, I it. found it. Okay, Charmaine. Um, first one, this is in alphabetical order, the three choices. The first one is act, love, walk, or love, act, walk, depending on which order you want the words in. The verse is Micah 6, 8. Um, the next one is harmony, and there are numerous choices. I'll read them real quickly. Live in harmony with each other. Do your part to live in peace as much as possible. Love is what binds us together in perfect harmony. Let the peace um, that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body, you are all called to live in peace. Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Show sympathy, brotherly love, compassion, and humility. That one's in First Peter. And then the last one is one. Just the word one. Um, and these are longer verses. I don't know. I'll read them all. But um, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Um, may my joy, or make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Then there's um, a long one from Ephesians 4. Then there's Philippians 1.27, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. And then um, one from John 17. Thank you, Charmaine. So Janie, do you need some more time or? Are you um, ready? To, about so. 30 seconds. Okay, Finchley, sing us a song. <laughs> uh, Brent, do you want us to type our camp's choice into the chat then when we're in our breakout room? Uh, Debbie, what do you want there? Well, or you can email it. People have been emailing me, but. what What's the preference? You want it emailed? Let's do that. Email yes. them to, to Debbie. And then we can do the big reveal tomorrow at the at the meeting. That way people won't vote twice. That's right. We can't have that. Mm. <laughs> well, plus, we want to have a real incentive for you all to come back tomorrow for the business. There you meeting. Go. Yep. <laughs> so if you want to know, you need to show up. And that'll be a much quicker, lighter day of Zoom than today was. Brent, what time is tomorrow? Uh, let's see. Depends on your time zone. Oh, so Pacific time, it's at uh, twelve thirty, right? Twelve. 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 Oh, sorry. That's Central right. Time is two o'clock. So twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. One o'clock. Two o'clock. Three o'clock. Right. Yeah. Three is East Coast. Three is East Coast. Um, there are some camps that don't have um, a voting member registered um, for tomorrow's meeting. Um, only the people that I have who were on the registration um, and indicated are getting the link. So make sure that you have conversation with your folks that you have a uh, person who's going to be um, voting for your camp. Um, and if they have not gotten an email tonight, it will be sent out within a half hour after our, our closing. Um, if they've not gotten one from the secretary at Cedarbrook Camps, um, please email me um, and I will send them the link um, so that we make sure that we have a voting member um, for the meeting tomorrow. Anybody have a question on that or did that make sense? Deadline for the what's it called theme vote 9 p.m. tonight central yeah. time 9 p.m. central oh. 
Okay, I'm ready. I put everybody, I put it all in the chat for everybody. You're the best. You guys rock. Okay, everybody's going to go to your groups and we'll bring you back um, just a few minutes before um, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, or eight o'clock, depending on where you are. <laughs> did anyone else hear the Happy Days theme song right now? I totally did. Okay, just making sure it wasn't just me. <laughs> Even those much older than you heard it. <laughs> well, if anybody my age heard it. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's more the other way around, huh? <laughs> we should hear it. <laughs> you only in reruns. Yeah, some, right. Some, some folks lived it. This is true. Yes. We could be reliving hey. it. Okay. Yeah, Jerry lived it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so Brent, I didn't know if you wanted to be in a particular group or not, since you're with so many camps, that's why I didn't <laughs> put you in one. Well, you know, because I, I thought about reaching out to you and I thought, I'm going to just wait and see what happens, um, <laughs> you know, because I didn't want to give you one more thing to have to think about. Let's send me to Nakamo since I'm directing there. Nakamo, okay. Yeah. Okay. doke Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> 